Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting polynomial equation. We could probably call this a hexic equation because of the sixth degree. We have x squared plus the quantity 4x cubed minus 3x squared equals 1. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods. The second method will be very brief. I just want to show you the idea. But the first method, we're going to go into details. And I just want to say regarding the first method that the trigonometric substitutions are awesome. Not just for solving some integrals, but also for solving algebraic equations. So here's what we're going to do. Hopefully you were able to recognize the triple angle here. If I replace x with cosine alpha, alpha being an angle between 0 and 2 pi, then 4x cubed minus 3x is just going to be 4 cosine cubed alpha minus 3 cosine alpha, which is the same as cosine of 3 alpha. If you want, you can write the 3 alpha in parentheses. I don't care. It doesn't matter that much. It just doesn't look good in my opinion, but anyway, it's up to you. So, from here, we get the following equation. Replacing x with cosine alpha gives us cosine squared alpha on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, actually not on the right-hand side yet, we have plus cosine 3 alpha squared. So we can also write this as cosine squared 3 alpha, and their sum is equal to 1. Great. Well, we know that sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha is equal to 1, but this is a little different. It's kind of like the sum of two cosines squared. But we can still do the same, or we could still use the same identity. If you go ahead and, you know, subtract cosine squared, or you could replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared alpha. And then 1 is going to cancel out. And then you're going to get a 0 here. And if you put negative sine squared on the right hand side, you're going to get cosine squared 3 alpha equals sine squared alpha. It's better to have them on different sides so we can solve it as a normal standard trigonometric equation. Still not standard because we have different functions on either side, so we have to set them equal to each other. So we have to have the same kind of function. In other words, cosine on both sides or sine on both sides. Make sense? But we could easily do that by using another well-known identity. If you have two angles that are complementary, like 30 degrees and 60 degrees, or 10 degrees and 80 degrees, or 100 degrees and negative 10 degrees, so that their sum is always 90 degrees, or pi over 2 radians, then those two angles will have uh, the following property. Let's say alpha and beta are complementary, then sine alpha will be the same as cosine beta. In other words, we can go ahead and do the following replacement. And it depends on also which one you want to change. And in this case, I want to change this one. So I could go ahead and write it as sine. So I'm going to do the following. Let me do it first and then I will replace here. So basically cosine of 3 alpha can be written as sine of pi over 2 minus 3 alpha. So basically, if you are trying to turn cosine into sine or sine into cosine, all you have to do is take the angle, subtract from pi over 2 to get the complement, and then you're going to, um, you know, achieve your goal. So if you replace cosine 3 alpha with this, but of course it's squared, you're going to get sine squared pi over 2 minus 3 alpha equals sine squared alpha. Okay, there's a couple of ways to handle this equation. We could put, we could put them on the same side and then sub, um, factor by difference of two squares and then look at each equation. We could also use sum to product formulas or we could just keep them on either side and let's split it into two cases. So I'm going to call, uh, call those cases 1 and 2 and then we're going to do 1a, 1b and 2a, 2b. Okay, 2b or not 2b. Yay.
All right, so let's go ahead and start with one. One is going to be where we take the positive case. So it's kind of like the sine pi over alpha minus 3 pi is the same as sine alpha. So if a squared equals b squared, then this gives us two solutions. Either a is b or a is negative b, right? Awesome. So this is a equals b. And this splits up into two solutions. Like I said earlier, 1a is going to be, just take it as is, pi over 2 minus 3 alpha equals alpha plus 2 and pi. You just add multiples of, you know, 2 pi to it. And then from here, we can basically put everything on the same side. Let's uh, subtract alpha, negative 4 alpha equals negative pi over 2 plus 2 and pi. And negative 4 alpha can be written as 2 pi minus pi over 2, which is going to be 3 pi over 2 plus 2 and pi. And then divide both sides by negative 4. You're going to get alpha equals negative 3 pi over 8 minus n pi over 2. That n pi over 2 means you're going to add multiples of pi over 2. Or subtracting is pretty much the same thing. But uh, this negative 3 pi over 8, we can write it as, you know, a different angle. Okay, so anyways, uh, going through these cases, let me just give you, how about um, I give you all the results pretty much, right? And then let's see where we can take us. And also to avoid the problem of the uh, negativity, negativity here, you can do the following. Let me show you another way to approach it. You could write the alpha first because that's going to keep things positive. So we can write it like this, plus 2 and pi. And I'll put the alphas on the same side. You're going to get 4 alpha equals pi over 2 plus 2 and pi. By the way, I said subtracting n pi over 2 is the same as adding n pi over 2. That's not true because if you have like something like negative n pi over 2 and when you add like 2 pi to it, obviously that's going to be a different story than n pi over 2 plus 2 uh, pi. Make sense? Okay. So anyways, those are different scenarios. And let's go with this one. I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and that's going to give me pi over 8 plus n pi over 2. And obviously, pi over 8 is the smallest angle uh, that satisfies this equation. But it's basically the general solution is this one. Okay, let's go ahead and quickly take a look at 1b, and then we're going to go through 2a and 2b. I don't want to make it too long. Let me just give you the answer. For b, you're going to get, and I could probably use the other color. Let's go with this. So for b, it's going to be negative pi over 4 minus k pi, where k is an integer. So that's our second solution. And for the 2a, we're going to get alpha equals 5 pi over 4 minus m pi. And for the b, we're going to get alpha equals 7 pi over 4 minus r pi, where r and m are integers. So you kind of get those four solutions from here, obviously with their values of R, M, K, we're going to get more values, but some of these are going to coincide because we're supposed to have six solutions. Make sense? Okay, great. So let's see what this is going to give us. Obviously, X is equal to cosine of alpha. From here, we should be getting for X plus minus root 2 over 2 plus minus square root of 2 minus root 2 over 2 and plus minus square root of 2 plus root 2 over 2 and that gives you six solutions let's go ahead and take a look at this second method real quick and then we'll check the graph out and we'll be done so second method is basically if you just expand it remember our original problem was like this and if you just expand it it's not actually super bad you're going to get the following equation and we could probably call this hexic right and then you could basically set x squared equal to y that gives you 16y cubed minus 24y squared plus 10y minus 1 equals 0. This is cubic, and by using rational root theorem, we realize that y equals 1 half is a solution. Therefore, um, you know, 2y minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial, which means 2x squared minus 1 is a factor of the, the hexic equation, and the other factor is going to be 8x to the fourth minus 8x squared plus 1. You could also find out by polynomial division. And from here, you're going to get, you know, this is a biquadratic. And this is easy. Quadratic set equal to 0. 
and you're going to get all the solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up with that. The graph of this polynomial looks like this and you can see the intersection points which are solutions with the horizontal line and there are a total of six solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video in one hour. Until then, be safe, take care and bye bye.